long, long time ago in what is now Kiritalo, Mexico. And Bolpi, my wife, mission to me was to cut a large, intensely red, orange, or red-orange Mexican opal using the complex Portuguese Christian triangle design. Mexican fire opal is one of my favorite gemstones to cut. I'm always on the lookout to buy Mexican fire opal rough, but the color must be vivid. Vivid red, red-orange, or orange. Red, as in fire engine red, or candy apple red, or cherry red, is in my opinion, the best. And it, it has to be translucent and clean and it has to be big. The bigger the better. Unfortunately, it's rare to find Mexican opal that is large, clean, translucent, and with a vivid color. So I have a very limited stash of uncut pieces of Mexican opal rock in my inventory. Fire opals are found in North America, in Idaho and Oregon, in Central America, mostly Mexico, and South America. The vast majority of fire, fire opals are mined in Mexico in the states of Quirtaro, Hidalgo, Guerrero, Michoacan, Julicio, Chihuahua, and St. Louis Posti. And the most important mines are the Cristera state of Mexico. These mines were first established in 1835 and are still producing fire opals to this day. Mexican fire opal comes in colors from white to yellow to orange to red. Intense red is the rarest of the Mexican opal, and these stones are highly sought after. The fire in Mexican fire opals does not refer to the play of color like regular opals such as you would find in the beautiful opals found in Australia and more recently in Ethiopia. Fire, in the case of the Mexican fire opal, refers more to the fire in or intense color of the cut gemstone. Mexican opal is one of the few varieties of opal that can be faceted. This is because some Mexican opal specimens are transparent. You, you can, light passes through them. And the value of Mexican opal depends uh, and varies according to the color, size, and quality of the gemstone rough or the gem. The Portuguese cushion triangle design I will use was created by my friend and faceting tutor Mr. Ernie Howes of New Mexico. He created this gemstone design in 1996 and released it to the public for other gemstone cutters to use. This design contains 109 facets, each of which must be cut at a precise angle and must just kiss the facet next to it. Ernie Howes is a legendary gem cutter and designer of gemstone cuts. He wrote a book on faceting designs called Revealing the Light Within. Every year, master gemstone faceters compete to see who can cut and polish a gemstone with the most accuracy. And every year, one gem design is selected for these masters to use in the competition. Routinely, one of Ernie's designs is chosen to challenge the very best gemstone cutters from around the world. Ernie was also one of the founders of the New Mexico Faceters Guild, which, in my opinion, is one of the three best faceters guild in the nation, along with the Columbia Williamette Faceters Guild in Portland and the old Pueblo Lapidary Club in Tucson. And if you're looking for a fasting machine, talk to Ernie. He buys and repairs used fasting machines and resells them. The best fasting machine, in my opinion, is the Ultratech V5. The second best is the Pre V5 or the V2 version. And the third best is a used Ultratech. But that's just my opinion. Talk to Ernie. Talk to other fasters. Ernie owns many different fasting machines and he can definitely assist you with a fasting machine. Mexican fire opal generally cuts and polishes without any problem. The saying among gen cutters about Mexican fire opal is easy to cut, easy to polish, but harder than heck to find large pieces of top quality and color to fasten. I've already attached the stone to the brass top, so I'll have to show you how I do that in a future video. For larger stones, I prefer to use two-part epoxy to attach the stone to the dot. For small stones, I prefer to use a variety of super glue called Loctite 404. And we have an 18 karat uh, red, clear, clean Mexican fire opal. I'm going to start by preforming it with my most worn out preforming grit because Mexican opal is kind of soft and I don't need 
brand new rough black cutting it. So I've got a 360 grit, well-worn topper. We're gonna to start with that and then switch to the 600. Again, I use a, a master lap to set it on, fold up, you wouldn't be able to cut it without the master lap. Okay, we've uh, started preforming around the girdle and uh, you can see it looks much more like a triangle now. So we'll just uh, continue to preform our stone. So we've finished preforming our Mexican opal and now we have a decision to make. So um, right here on the stone, you can see the, a little bit of clay that was embedded in the, in the uh, Mexican opal when it was formed. Um, we've ground most of it out. Um, so the options are to grind the pavilion down below this clay, cutting out that clay. And if you do that, you got to make sure you have enough room left for the upper part of the stone or the pavilion. Or you can continue to cut the girdle, making it a smaller, smaller stone and grinding out the clay that way. But that, way, that means your stone is going to be smaller. So best is to continue to cut the pavilion down to get out this piece of clay, but you have to leave enough for the pavilion, or for the crown, the top half of the stone. So we're going to keep our stone as big as, as possible and get rid of this inclusion by uh, grinding down to just below that clay. Okay, we finished pre-polishing with our 600 lap and we've got everything well defined, worked out that, uh, that piece of clay. The stone's pretty much the size it's going to be when we're done. So now it's just a matter of uh, using finer and finer diamond laps to get rid of the scratches of the previous lab. Just like in woodworking, you use different grits of sandpaper to get, get rid of the, the scratches in the previous sandpaper until you get down to a sandpaper that uh, human eye can't see the, uh, the scratches, and that's the polish phase. So um, what does matter is that as you move to your finer and finer diamond grits, that you use quality laps. So this is a Crystal Light 1200. It's a quality lap. So what we do, is we go around the stone again using the same design, same angles, and we just go over every facet with our 1200, removing the scratches from the 600. So we finished uh, the girdle with our, going around the girdle with our thousand uh, diamond grit crystallite lap. And before I move uh, away from the girdle, I want to go ahead and polish it. This being a Mexican opal, it polishes very easily. <clears throat> so to polish it, uh, today I'm going to use uh, cerium oxide, the uh, ultra laps, which are disposable plastic laps with cerium oxide on the top part. So it has to have a master lap under it, of course, uh, backing. We put some water on the backing to hold it in place. I put the uh, piece of sponge here in the, in the drop tank, in the water tank, and that prevents water from spraying out here where we bring the drip tank rubber down so that we can polish the girdle. I'm gonna uh, add some cerium oxide to this ultra lap and we use uh, a bat stick. The bat stick was invented by uh, Gearloose, great company, great group, of, great group of group of people inventing things. Looks like a big Crayola crayon of cerium oxide. It allows me to use water instead of oil um, which makes it easier for me to check the stone. So I just run some cerium oxide on my ultra lap and then run our girdle over it. And what we have is a beautiful polish. So on this one girdle facet, it is polished. Okay, I've finished polishing the girdle of our Mexican opal. And you can see, even though I have a, not a good camera, you can see it's polished in the girdle, as opposed to the rest of the pavilion, which is still has the kind of whitish color because of the scratches. So what I'm going to do now is continue along cutting the rest of the pavilion with our 1200 crystal light and then going directly to the uh, cerium oxide and uh, polishing it again. So I've finished cutting and polishing the pavilion for the bottom half of our Mexican opal. So now we're going to transfer our uh, Mexican opal to the pavilion side and then remove the wax from the crown and cut the rest of the uh, stone. I take a little tiny piece of modeling clay, piece about that big, put in the very bottom of the brass top, and that's because I don't want the super glue holding the very bottom of the pavilion where everything comes together. That's called the culet. One time I had it break and uh, I don't want that to happen again. So, so put our dot in our transfer jig, put our stone in the other end, give it a 
push a couple of times, make sure the dots are aligned. Then we're going to tighten up the top part, pull our bottom part down to expose the dot. Put in a drop of super glue. I use Loctite 404, and I've already cleaned the stone and, and the top with denatured alcohol so that we'll get a good contact. The two drops filled that cone up, push it up, turn it over to make sure the glue, glue is touching both the stone and the dot. So we have a good connection when it hardens. Okay, we're working on the, the crown or the upper half of our Mexican opal. So we're using a 1200 crystallite solid steel disc lap with again 1200 grit diamond. And uh, we're gonna cut down to where the girdle is a 0 0.3, 0 0.5, somewhere in between there. It's always good just to take a look. Everything's in alignment. So we've cut three facets. So our girdle's three, but there's two more on each part of the triangle way out at the tip. And right now, so the girdle goes flat and then it goes up where those last two are. And we're looking for the that this third cut to move the girdle so it lines up with the one next to it. And then we have a perfect, we'll have a perfect girdle all the way around. To be a level girdle all the way across the stone now and we have two more to cut and the index for those last two 72 and 88 so we set our index 72 now i'll cut the next tier which is going to bring another facet down to just like a v and we want the bottom part of that v to just touch the top of the girdle because we've already set our girdle line and that'll be the next here so we'll have little diamond shaped facets all the way around and then another tier on top of that and then another one and then we will cut our table and once we've polished them all we will be done with our Mexican opal you see it goes from 39.1 to 39.0 and that means that uh, these facets are getting quicker and quicker to cut and because of the angle so there's no point to using the 1200 grit anymore because it's going to overcut so we'll move to an 8000 you can see from a 1200 crystallite to the uh, straight to the 8000 hyper edge. And you can see the uh, these two facets up here are 1200 and everything else is the uh, 8000 hyper edge. And there's no scratches. It looks, gosh, it looks like a polish. It's amazing. Normally if I'm using diamond, I'm using a slow drip about like that if I'm using my bat laps. Um, if I'm using the crystallite, I'm using about this. But for these uh, hyper edge, it's just before where it's a stream. A lot of water, so I'm gonna continue with the 8000 and then go straight to polish and nothing else. <laughs> okay, we just finished polishing the table of our Mexican opal uh, with uh, cerium oxide. After we use the Hyperlap 8000. So, our Mexican opal, now complete. I'm going to soak it in uh, acetone to get the uh, super glue out of the adhesive of the dop. Take it up, the stone off the dop with acetone, weigh it, measure it, and send it over to Bokey. Let me know what you think in the comments. Bro. If you want a Mexican fire opal of your very own, custom cut by Bokey's, you are in luck as I still have a few pieces of rough available. But I'm always on the lookout for more. I love this stuff. Thanks for watching.